Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Right now for the Ford Ranger Electric I've had a bit of a eureka moment in terms of fitting the cells within the battery case and that actually was quite a bit harder than I thought it would be initially because just of the, the, the size of the battery cells, the format of them, um, there's a lot of curvatures to the lid that change the elevation um, in terms of orienting them. I wanted to, to stack everything vertically. Um, that was my preference because that's kind of what the specifications of the battery cells call for. Uh, but that just wouldn't work out, especially not after I added terminals to the top uh, to, to more securely fasten the bus bars and the terminal connections. So I had to get a little bit creative and I finally, I think, settled on a solution that gives me clearance in all the areas that I need clearance while still fitting a full 100 cells. Well, here's my Eureka moment. So I still haven't gotten this uh, rubber removed here that's impeding this. I don't know if I'll be able to fit another cell here anyway. There's a pinch point that occurs right about there. And this side, it seems to have just missed it. So even if I get that rubber removed and can push these two cells back, there might be room for another cell here, but then it might also impede on that, that sort of pinch point and then I can't get the lid closed. But test fitting it, this front part is good, this center part is good, and up to here was good until I got back here. Now, what I had before was these horizontal stacks all the way, you know, pretty close to this circle and then I had the third or I guess the fourth cell vertically uh, right about here in the line um, so to the back end from the screw but apparently not back far enough that it cleared this so you see that screw point there it wasn't quite far enough back that this lid was clearly this turn here was clearly landing on top of the cell when it was stacked for high. So I have this other one underneath. So the cells um, would have come to about here, this end part, um, but that apparently just wasn't quite enough to clear that, that boundary layer there. What I'm hoping and I want to try is do all of the cells on this bottom row sort of stacked on their narrow side. Um, and when I do the whole row, I get a, a full, well, let's just say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, I think 21. Yeah, so it's 21 cells along that bottom column, right? That, that are on their sides vertically. Um, so I removed all of these horizontal stacks and replaced the bottom with all vertical stacks. So that's 21 cells and 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So 28 just on this boundary layer here where before I was only getting, I believe, 26. And what's interesting is when these are on their side, they're a little bit shorter than three of them horizontally stacked. So I get a little bit more vertical clearance, but what's more important is it pushes this basically a full cell width back from that screw point. So that impingement point should happen right about here. And so these should be well back of that. And this vertical height, if you follow it all the way back to the shell here, um, yeah, it's clear. So essentially this is a hundred cells so using this layout I could in theory if I cleared this area and it clears that impingement and I wanted to stack all the way up over here um, I could theoretically I guess get a hundred and two cells in maybe a hundred and four um, because I could also possibly stack one vertically on its side here 
I might try that clearance just to see. Um, and the reason for it is, while it's all well and good that I have um, these cells fit in this area of the battery pack, I'm not really using this vertical space very well. If you look at the front, you know, there's all sorts of vertical room here. But this is the location where um, the the computer for the, the truck, the original stock BCEM, the Battery Control Energy Management Unit, whatever they, the acronym stands for, it, it would go here. Uh, it feeds in through that hole there, and then it feeds power lines and everything else down to where the contactor box needs to fit down here. So I still need room at this back end. I'll have room up here for the BECM, but I need room back here at the back end for at the very least the contactor box that has a short run that goes out of this port to the inverter motor controller. But I would also like to preserve some space back here um, for the uh, BMS because I'll be using an Orion BMS to link these all up. But in addition to the Orion BMS, I want a DC fast charging contact box back here as well. And so I, I'll need as much space as I can. So it might be possible that I just want to vertically, or I guess on the short side, stack these last couple of cells. Um, so it gives a much broader platform where I can put everything down. Um, now, there is a gap here, and not only is that possibly like potential space to fit one of those units, because of this taper point here at the end of the battery shell, it will actually uh, create another pinch point against the terminals on the cells that are laying inside. But that being said, you know, this is 100 cells. So 100 of these 280 amp hour, and I really do like, they're Lito Kala, um, but I really do believe that these are uh, EVE cells, um, the way they're formatted, the energy, the energy profile, everything else. They're, I think they're technically um, B grade because they were blemished, but they're full capacity. So that was at least, um, you know, a good deal. And I, if I had to buy retail cells again, I would buy them from EVE. I wouldn't buy them through Lito Kala, but I would buy them directly from EVE. So... Um, yeah, these cells are solid, holding uh, 3.51 volts right now. Uh, the inspector general's checking everything out. Um, I pulled the vent fan out from the front. Uh, but yeah, so I, right now, I mean, obviously, this needs to be in place, but I just want to do a quick, uh, you know, putting the lid back on and making sure that all of the clearance is in place. Uh, and I might, like I said, if this clears, I might try um, one more with a horizontal cell, possibly, um, and then just validate clearance there, because if that works, then I'll have a massive platform where I can fit all of the battery electronics and still have clearance from the lid on the back part here. So, hi, Cherry Boo Boo. Yeah, you like it? You like it? Okay. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned in research along the way with the Ford Ranger Electric in terms of just how flexible it is in terms of the uh, cell voltages and the number of voltages, uh, the number of cells that you can put in series, especially in terms of things like LFP. Uh, so like the NIM battery that I'm replacing or rebuilding that one originally was 25 12 volt cells well the voltage is technically identical for each one of those nim cells to four of these lfp cells in a series that's you know almost 12 volts uh, that's why these work so well as uh, replacements for uh, 12 volt uh, lead acid batteries as well so in theory you could actually put a hundred of these in series in the ford ranger electric and use all of the uh, native uh, battery management system, all of that. I'm not going to be doing that, um, but it's just nice to know that, that you have that option. Uh, but in fact, you could even go up to 108 cells um, in series 
because the voltages, as long as you cut off the peak voltage at about 3.5, which is still 98, 99% full for these cells, uh, it would operate with the uh, Ford Ranger Electric's uh, uh, onboard electronics. So there's a lot of options there. Uh, but at this point, all, all, what I figured out is I know how to fit 100 cells while having complete clearance with the lid. So I'm not gonna have to have any sort of a novel solution in terms of raising the lid up, giving additional clearance, things of that nature. Um, and, and so the, the big factors now are, am I going to have enough room for the battery electronics that go into the battery? Uh, I also removed the front fan. Now I didn't need to do that for clearance, uh, but it opens up a port that provides possible access under from under the hood uh, for additional connections and things like that that I might want to put through uh, so I don't necessarily have to use all of the stock Ford connections. But now that I have the actual layout of the battery set, um, the, the next thing is I just have to plan for the connections and the connection types between each terminal because some of them I'll be using traditional bus bars, some of them I'll be using cabling um, with you know terminal lugs uh, so just getting all of that fit together, there's going to be a lot of planning and a lot of fabrication uh, that's required to do all of that uh, in addition to everything else. So um, yeah, this is, this is just having this much of it, the design down means that I can move forward from there. So, you know, again, sorry it's taking so long. I wish I was driving the truck already, but there's a lot of uh, design work that goes into this as well that I don't... that I don't necessarily have time for. You almost made it, almost made it. Uh, anyway, so uh, I, I hope uh, you appreciate the update. You know, this is the, the, the fan that I pulled out. Uh, if I do add a fan back, it'll probably be a uh, brushless DC fan uh, for efficiency purposes. But I hope you enjoyed the update. I hope uh, this was helpful. I'll go into maybe some more details about how I'm connecting the lugs that I'm actually using, some of the processing and machining I have to do. Um, and then of course, there's a whole lot of other stuff that has to happen uh, with the Ford Ranger um, in terms of battery connections possibly um, exploring uh, DC fast charging options, uh, you know, setting up and, and linking up the, the BMS. So all of this is stuff that I still have to have to share with you. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, I hope you appreciate the update and uh, the acrobatic cats for entertainment. And uh, thank you for watching.